Good morning dear friends happy to be with you for a few minutes as together we will meditate and continue our meditation from yesterday the title made dumb through unbelief is the experience of sakaraya the priest to whom god sent his angel with a message that he was going to have a child in his old age and he couldn't believe it and because he didn't believe what the angels told him he was stricken by the angel by dumbness that's what we uh, we we were considering and uh, we shall continue this study today and praying that uh, the lessons that we can learn from Zacharias experience uh, will help us to overcome our own uh, unbelief and doubts and so let us continue our meditation on the experience of Zacharias as recorded in the gospel according to st luke chapter 1 and i hope all of you will remember what we have read in spite of the severe punishment the priest suffered we found him faithful in the service of the lord the lesson we learned yesterday is we should not be too engrossed in our trials and we should not neglect our duty our responsibilities in the service of god there are other lessons we may learn from sakarai's experience and the first of these other lessons is this visions may come while doing our ordinary work and sometimes and most of the time it is totally unexpected we don't ex- expect anything to happen while we remain faithful in just doing what god has given us to do in his service and sometimes these are the moments suddenly god breaks through to us and we have a vision of him sakaraya while he was in his usual place of work executing his priestly responsibility and duties he saw the angel with a message from god himself So where was he and what was he doing in a regular place of his work and he was faithful even with the pain of that affliction he did not think of neglecting his duty towards God and that is the time God can speak to us Let us think of few people I just name few people whom God has called Now Moses for example was keeping his father-in-law's sheep out in the field when the call of God came for him to leave and to go back to Egypt and to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 And what was Gideon doing when his call came to deliver the people of Israel from the Midianites hand he was threshing the wheat in the field and how about Elisha he was plowing his field when the prophet Elijah met him and uh, the prophetic mantle thus fallen on Elisha in 1st kings chapter 19 verse 19 and how about david 
In Psalm number 78 to 70 says, God himself says, I have brought you, took you out of the sheepfold. He was tending his sheep. And how about Matthew? Matthew was sitting at his chamber of tax, tax collector's chamber, collecting taxes. How about Peter, John and James? They are out in the sea, catching fish. God comes in the midst of our labor. He never calls lazy people. That is the lesson. He always looks for men and women who are busy in their ordinary work given to them. And he calls them. And he knows people who don't do anything. There are things to do. There are duties to fulfill. There are responsibilities to fulfill. But there are lazy people who are enjoying their own life in their own way. God is not looking for such people. God is looking for busy people who are faithful in doing their duties and responsibilities. And another lesson we learn, our prayers may be answered unexpectedly and suddenly. Verse 13 of Luke chapter 1. The angel said, your prayers are heard. Verse 7 says, they both were old. What does that suggest? They both were old and yet their prayers also as heard. They both must have prayed hard when the possibility was there. When they were not so old. Even after they continued their prayer, when the possibility was very dim. Dear friend, if the Lord has given you faith, to pray for a specific need, then continue praying even after the expected possibilities were dead. That's what Abraham did. Possibilities were gone for both of them, to, for Sarah to conceive and for Abraham to produce. They are too old. 190 years old. But the Bible makes it very clear that uh, Abraham still believed God. And he was rewarded. And so even when you don't see the possibilities, still you can trust God and in faith you can keep on praying because our God is a God of impossibilities. There is nothing too hard for the Lord with that confession. So don't stop praying. If you have been praying for some need and the answer hasn't come, but don't stop. Mary and Martha waited for Jesus to come while Lazarus was sick, but he didn't turn out. And then at last he came, but when? Four days late. Lazarus was dead and he was in the grave for four days. But the good news is, four days late was only for Martha and Mary. But for Jesus, he was still on time. And very soon, it was proved also both to Martha and Mary and other the crowd which was there. As he called out Lazarus from the grave, when he said, Lazarus, come forth. 
here comes Lazarus walking out of the grave. So the possibilities were all disappeared. Then Jesus arrived and uh, but it was not too late for Jesus. So believe. I heard the story of a, uh, an old couple living and uh, the husband was though old, he was never a God-fearing man, he was a drunkard. Every moment he is drunk. And they prayed, prayed and this old wife prayed for 50 years and after 50 years one day he got sick, he went to the hospital and he died and the news came from the hospital to the wife and she, she went to the hospital and uh, she wanted to see the dead body and uh, they hesitated to let her in um, uh, while they were preparing. Uh, but she insisted now, being wife, she had the right to go and see. And she went and she closed the door and knelt before by the side of that bed. She was fully covered with the white sheet, head to foot. But she prayed to the Lord. This is what he prayed. Lord, I have prayed for him 50 years for his salvation. And I refuse to believe that you would take him away before answering my prayer. And as he prayed, a bright shining light broke the ceiling and fell upon his face. And suddenly there was movement. And this man sat on the bed and there by the side of that bed, both of them knelt down and he committed his life to the Lordship of Jesus. Look at the faith of this woman. She refused to accept that God would take him away without answering her prayer for his salvation. Even when the possibility was not there at all, she still prayed. And the third and the last, our God is able to do far above and more than we ask. Luke chapter 1 verses 14 and 15, you read again. They asked for a son and God not only gave them a son, but he gave them a great son. More than satisfying. What a God. Hallelujah. And I close by encouraging you. If you have been praying for something and the possibility is all dim now. And anyone who hears me, remember even in the future. When God, you will pray according to God's will. And according to the scriptures. You can trust God to honor his own promises. So don't stop. Don't quit. Continue to believe and pray. Father, you know the people who are listening to this. How many of them have a great need? And some of them may not even have the faith to pray because the situation seems to be too hard. But Lord, let that faith arise by this word today that our God is a God of impossibilities. He steps in only when an impossible situation comes to us. Thank you for honoring the prayers and faith of your people. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. For your glory and honor, Lord. And now, this is the day the Lord has given you. You, you rejoice in and be glad on this day and enjoy this day for God's glory. Amen.